one of the sons of La Verandre was one of the uh, first people to uh, be shown Red Cliff on the south uh, side of uh, Black Island. Uh, Red Cliff is a few miles uh, further to the south from what you can see across the Strait of Water at uh, Black Island, uh, the uh, Silica Sand Quarry. And at uh, the uh, Red Cliff uh, site, the First Nations people had been recovering ochre at, uh, for quite a number of years uh, to be used in various rituals uh, for body paint. And that uh, ochre was developed on an iron ore body. That iron ore body was later extracted uh, in the 1800s uh, to uh, produce a train car wheel in Chicago. So it officially uh, comes down in our records as being the first record of mining. Of course, we still have to acknowledge the First Nations uh, removal of ochre from that particular site as well. But uh, this lake has had a tremendous amount of uh, economic development in a sense that predated a lot of things uh, uh, that occurred in other parts of the province. Uh, there has been no, uh, let's say, iron ore production anywhere in the province since that first extraction. Uh, the lake itself is generally very shallow. It is only in the range of 40 feet deep, uh, just about everywhere, except right off this shoreline and extending all the way to the north to the Narrows. Depth uh, will increase to about 120 feet. Now, if we go back in, uh, out of human history and into geological time, where I'm sitting on the shore, there could have been up to a mile of rock above my head. And that rock would have ranged all the way from about 550 million years old to about the youngest rocks in Manitoba uh, that are bedrock, uh, about 80 million years in age. Uh, that youngest rock is found way, way, way to the southwest of here, uh, near Turtle Mountain. Uh, that is a rock that is uh, called Paleocene in age. It includes the Turtle Mountain formation and uh, the various members of that particular formation. So you can imagine over our head, uh, we would have had uh, the sediments being deposited of the same age as Turtle Mountain because this lake is very representative of what could have been a much deeper uh, lake uh, basin in Manitoba uh, that extended right over on top of the shield, which is over to our east uh, in the direction I'm looking right now. And that uh, lake system could have totally overdraped the Precambrian rock uh, right into the Ontario uh, uh, the portion of uh, Hudson Bay, the uh, James Bay area. So we've had a tremendous amount of material removed. Where we're sitting is on rock that is roughly an age of two to four billion years of age. This rock directly below me is a, uh, a Nisic rock uh, that was formed in that sort of time frame. It was then draped over by the sands that you see uh, in the distance, the Winnipeg Formation, that would have been directly above me. And then above that would have been the limestones of the Red River Formation above that. So there would have been a, a whole series of carbonate rocks deposited roughly from 550 million years ago to about 300 million years ago, to the Devonian rocks. So you had above me ore division, Silurian, Devonian, maybe even Mississippian rocks that again, only are present in southwestern Manitoba. This is part of what is called the Western Canada Sedimentary Basin. This basin extends all the way to the Rockies. At the time, the sands were being deposited uh, in the ore division, they were in the marine basin. There was salt water behind me at that time, although in time and space, it was much higher above my head. Uh, this is only a representation of what that uh, ore division ocean might have looked like. So uh, there's been a lot happening in Manitoba and a lot of it is present right here. You can visualize uh, on this shoreline, a lot of geological history. 
oceans coming and going, receding, and then much more recently, of course, the glaciers coming over the top. Uh, in the last million years, we've had at least five major glaciations. There's actually scratches on this rock from the glaciers passing over the top of it. And you can actually see the evidence of the ice sheets. And then, of course, after the ice sheets melted, Glacial Lake Agassiz was here. And Lake Winnipeg is only the remnant of Glacial Lake Agassiz. Lake Manitoba, Lake Winnipegosis are also remnants of that and a few of the smaller lakes. Those are the very deepest parts of Glacial Lake Agassiz. And Glacial Lake Agassiz uh, was here up until about 17,000 years ago. This is my favorite geological spot. Uh, it is my Rosetta Stone it, uh, in the same way that you can use it for translating. This has almost everything you ever wanted to ask. Right from the oldest rock, two to four billion, right to the glaciation and the uh, striations left by the glaciers. And uh, even the uh, developments that have occurred, there's a lodge nearby here. Uh, all I can say uh, to uh, this particular spot is thumbs up.